In this tutorial, we'll learn some more about dimensioning in SolidWorks drawings. We'll bring in these views here of the base plate for our Sterling engine, and we'll import these dimensions automatically from our model. So these are all model dimensions, and we'll arrange them similar to that shown in the drawing. We'll show you how to add a note uh, with multiple leaders like this here. We'll bring in a view from underneath, and we'll include a detailed view similar to that shown here. Now, this drawing is the other one we'll look at, and it's of the left side frame for our Sterling engine. And there's a lot of dimensions on this drawing, and we also have three sectional views here taken through the frame. When we bring in the model dimensions for this drawing, they can look a bit of a mess. We will look at the auto arrange dimension tool to arrange our dimensions, but sometimes it might be easier to add some of the dimensions in the drawing itself. So we'll show you how to add these as driven dimensions. So we can combine model dimensions and reference our driven dimensions that you create in the drawing. So let's look at doing these now in SolarWorks. Okay, so I'll start by going off to browse for the base plate. Here it is, click open. Our drawing palette here updates with the various views of the base plate. Let's take this view here and drag it over. If I drag below, I will get the view from below. And if I drag above, it automatically projects to give me the top view of the base plate. If you drag off at an angle there, it will give you an isometric. So if I press the control key, I can move this around and place it anywhere on the drawing. Let's show this shade of edges. It's got some center lines we don't need. Let's delete those. Let's change the scale of this. So our current sheet scale is 1 is to 1.5. And that's fine for the orthographic views. Just need to reduce the size of the isometric user defined. Let's go 2.5 just to reduce it a little bit so it fits in there on our sheet. So I want to drag the in point in here. Let's drag this dimension and just place it there. So you'll notice here that it hasn't brought in the details of the counter bar. So to bring that in from our model, we can go to model items on the annotation tab. The source is the entire model. I'll untick this box. The destination view is this view here. And I want to bring in our whole callout. So select whole callout and click OK. So here now we have the information for our counter bar. Right, there's four holes, the diameter of the holes, and the size of the counter bore, diameter 11 and depth of 6. And that counter bore is sized to suit the M6 socket head cap screw that's going to fit into it. Now there might be some dimensions, like the chamfer dimension is missing. Uh, we're missing a dimension here in elevation. So if you're missing any dimensions, you can put them in, right mouse drag, straight up, same as you would do in a sketch, and we're just going to click on this edge here, and this edge here, and this is the little glyph that appears here. This is our rapid dimension tool. So click there to place the dimension there. If you want to move it afterwards, you can. Clicking on the arrows moves them inside. So just toggle inside and outside. Okay, if they fit inside, then I think we should place them inside. So we also need to put in the chamfer. So if I click on the line here, and click the point and drag straight up. The value of that is 1. Now if I go over here onto the dimension properties, there's the default value dim, and I can add to that. So space multiply by 45, and you got your various symbols here, so multiply by 45 degrees. I'll click OK on that, and then you can drag and position this in your drawing. So these dimensions that we've added here are driven dimensions. Hover over there RD, R for reference. So these are reference dimensions and these will update if you change your geometry, but they don't drive the geometry in the same way that if I were to double click on one of these dimensions, I can go in and actually change the position of the holes there if I want. We're not going to do that right now. So I'll exit out of that. Now I can open up the part directly here from any of these drawing views, click on the isometric view. And now I want to create a view of this from underneath. 
Okay, so this view here, let's save this. So new view, so ISO below, control tab to go back to the drawing from the model. Let's go to our view palette. You'll see it's out of date. Let's refresh it so we can bring in that new view. So here's our view, ISO below. Let's just drop it in there. Change the display to shaded with edges. So let's change the scale of this to one is to 2.5 so that it fits in here on our drawing. Let's get rid of these center lines on our pictorial. And then finally, we have a detailed view. So to add a detailed view, you'll find that on the view layout, detailed view. We don't have any cosmetic threads, but you do have an option there to go for high quality. Draw your circle. This is the detailed view. Here's the text which comes along with it. So SolarWorks will automatically put in the scale of these. It will label the view for you. So again, with this view here, we have the right scale on it there as it is now. But if you want to change that, you can do so in here. So again, just using a user defined scale of two is the 2.5. One last thing, if you want to put a note on the drawing, annotation, note. So we have some options here for leaders to the left and the right when you add a note. So let's put in our note. So we one multiply by 45 and up here, you have an option here to put in our symbol. So add symbol. So here's our degree symbol. So here's our note one by 45 degrees chamfer top and bottom. If you click on that, you can add a leader to it. We've got some options as to how you want this to display. So we go for bint leader and the text centered on it. So, so if you click on the leader here and if you press control on the very tip of it there, you should be able to duplicate that to get a second leader line like that. Now we need to drop it on, on the edge so it doesn't change to a dot. Okay, so that's how you do multi-leader note there, just to identify the chamfer feature there on the pictorial. So that's that drawing completed. We now create the drawing for the left side frame. So let's go and browse for it left side frame. So we'll begin by bringing in this view here, looking in from the right, and that'll be our front view. If I drag above, now it's brought in all the dimensions there, as you see, if I drag above, we get the top view. Drag below, we get the bottom view. If I drag over to the side, I get the side view. If I drag off to the, at an angle there, you get an isometric view. And if you press control, you can move that view independently. Let's show it shaded. We'll delete the center lines from this view, but we'll leave them on the orthographic views. Let's reduce the scale of this. So we'll set the custom scale, say, let's try one as the two. And we'll drop that and place it there on the corner of the sheet. So we've got all these dimensions here. So how do you select all these dimensions? They are a bit of a mess. Now they are all model dimensions. So if I want to select all these dimensions together, I have to use a filter. So if you press F5 on your keyboard, it brings up this filter toolbar down here at the bottom. And we're going to filter for dimensions, filter dimensions. It also filters whole callouts, as you can see there. So let's go and pick filter dimensions. And now your cursor looks like Hoover here. So if I draw a window around all the geometry, it's going to pick just dimensions only. And then if you click on any one of these dimensions, you get this drawing dimensions palette, it'll pop up. And I have this option here called auto arrange dimensions. Now, if I click on that, SolarWorks will have a go at auto arranging these dimensions. Now it's not going to be perfect. This is what we get having done that. Now, when you're finished with the filter, you should turn it off. Otherwise you won't be able to pick and move the views around. We've got some duplication of dimensions here. So if you want to, you can delete a dimension and 
When you do that, it has changed the space. If you want to flip the arrows inside, you click on them. And we've seen this before. Now there's some dimensions. And you have to just experiment with dragging them around there. And again, you can flip the arrows and so forth. Um, let's drop that one there. So you can move these dimensions around and position them. So on the front view here, we've got tangent edges visible. So if I right click on the view there, tangent edge, and I'm going to set that to removed. And now we don't see those rounded edges. And you can do the same on the top view to remove tangent edges and just tidies up the views a little bit. So do the same on the bottom. Now these are all model dimensions. You know, if you double click on them, you can see, and we brought those in automatically there. You can drag and move them around. So sometimes we get a dimension like this here where we've got a narrow and it just seems to be in the middle of nowhere. Now, if I drag it down here, we could show it like that. So that would be one way to fix that. Any of these dimensions, you can drag the extension lines as well. Now it hasn't brought in the callouts for our threaded holes, although it has brought in, it tells you these are M4 up here. And we've got some threaded holes down here as well that haven't been brought in. So let's go and do that. So annotations, model items, and we want to bring in our whole callouts. We'll untick that. So the destination view. So in this view, I'm going to bring in whole callouts. So let's click on that. And this brings in the whole callout for the M6 holes there. So I'll drop that there. So this tells us that the drilled hole is diameter 5, depth 10, M6, metric thread 6, and it's a medium thread. And the depth of the thread is 8 millimeters. And the same on the top view. So I'm going to delete these M4s and I'm going to put in a whole callout. So once again, I'm going to click this view here, whole callout, and click OK. Now this is our whole callout for these holes. And you can move that around there and position it there. Now some dimensions need to be moved around. You need to flip the arrows. So it does a pretty good job of most dimensions. Now sometimes you get a dimension like the R5 here. Now if I click on it and click on leaders, and change it to inside instead of smart, then you find that the dimension then displays correctly. So that's setting it to inside like that. And these dimensions can be moved around so that they make sense. Now we've got three sectional views. Let's put those in now. So view layout, section view. So these are vertical sections. So it snaps there. Click OK, and there's our section view. Now SolidWorks will label these appropriately. There's section GG and third one here. And let's place it there. If I move the front view, the section view is moved down like that. Now you have some duplication. There might be a dimension here that doesn't make any sense. So you can delete any of these dimensions that don't suit. So I'll click the dimension and change it to inside the arrow. Let's flip the arrow like that. So these are our sectional views. And you can see here it's brought in the thread on the drilled hole and the same here in your sectional views. Now if you want to move a dimension, if you press the shift key and drag the dimension. And when you see the dimension symbol, drop the dimension and you've now moved the dimension from one view to in this case, the section view FF. So I've moved the 50 millimeter dimension there. If you want to place it at this side, you can as well. And then 
this case I would have to drag the projection lines there like that. If you move the section view, the dimensions move with it. If you want to copy a dimension, press Control. So if I take this dimension, and drop it here, I will copy that dimension from the front view to the side view. And again, if you want to place that dimension there and in the center and so on. Now you can move that dimension outside the section view there. If you want to line up different dimensions uh, so that they line up exactly, I'll just show you something here with the align tool. So if I click dimension 132 and dimension 40, and if I select the align tool here, now if you don't have the align tool, you can add it to your command manager. So I'll select the align option. So now, with these dimensions aligned, if I move one, the other one moves as well. Okay, apart from some tidying up, that's our dimensioned drawing there for the left side frame. If you wish, you can always delete some of these dimensions that might be too difficult to place and insert dimensions using your normal dimension tool. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.